this company up in Bellevue called Microsoft. They were talking about um, application software. There was this inkling of, yeah, you know, they were going to develop a spreadsheet product and a word processing product. I was very impressed by the um, idea of software as a business, software being separated from hardware. I believed in software, and when I came to Microsoft, my first job was to be the product manager on a product called Multiplan. Multiplan was distinguished by an extreme degree of portability. In the early days of personal computers, there was really quite a large number of different computers that came onto the market uh, using different processors, using different architectures. So our bet at that time was on diversity, on, on being able to run on as many different uh, computers as possible. And probably Multiplan was, was one of the most ported applications of all time. At, at one point, we were running on 50 different computers. Now, Multiplan didn't do as well as we wanted it to do. It did reasonably well in international markets, but not so well in the U.S. market. It was because we got leapfrogged by a product called Lotus 123. When I started in 84, the spreadsheet market was virtually 100% MS-DOS and Lotus 123. They had completely dominant market share, not just for spreadsheets, but they were the by far the most dominant app, I think, in, in the software, PC and software industry. After we saw how successful Lotus 123 was, we were kicking off the next generation of our spreadsheet, the project that would ultimately replace Multiplan. And the initial code name for that project was Odyssey. Ultimately, that's what became Microsoft Excel. Now, most people don't know that when Odyssey was kicked off in October of 1983, it was focused on being a better spreadsheet than Lotus 123 on the PC, not on graphic user interface. And so a brilliant programmer named Doug Clunder had figured out how to do the calculation algorithm in two dimensions simultaneously so that we could recalculate even faster than Lotus 123. By the spring of 1984, Bill and I were convinced that we really needed to bet on graphic user interface. And so we made a tough decision. We went to the team and said that we're going to shift from doing Odyssey on the PC and instead focus its initial release on the Apple Macintosh and then ultimately on Microsoft Windows. Excelled it tremendously. The group under the leadership of Jeff Harbors, they did a, a fantastic job and worked day and night, including the, the night before release. What we focused on was, you know, productivity, ease of use, being able to do things quickly. And the advantage of being in the Windows environment, having a GUI environment, we had drag and drop, you know, things like copy paste worked a lot easier in, in the new environment than they did in the DOS environment. That was really the important thing at that time to move software from, you know, PhD thesis kind of uh, user mode into something that, that an average person could use. Plus just uh, look, you know, the look and experience was just fantastic compared to DOS. Instead of just having character based, you know, everything's just text, you know, you have graphics, things look better, they feel better. When you say something is bold, you can actually display it as bold as opposed to a different color and, you know, underlining, everything is more WYSIWYG. A fantastic advantage there and then just the interface with the mouse and the first toolbars. On the Mac side, uh, we were not toiling in obscurity at all. Um, you know, we are clearly the number one, but in the, in the complete PC market, you know, we were single digits for a long, long time. When you think about the, the longevity of Excel is amazing. We had this incredible ethos about being really efficient in how we programmed Excel, which I think is a, an excellent long-term fundamental. You would think um, that there wouldn't be any code in Excel from, you know, 15, 20, 30 years ago, but a lot of it still lives. Every now and then you, you, you're you working in some code and you want to find out okay, when did this rule should get changed and why, and you'd look back through the history and sometimes you just keep having to look back and back and, and it'll, it'll go back to 1990 or 19, 
you know, 87 or something, that there's a lot of history in the code. It was a product that Microsoft built from the ground up, started off as underdog and had unparalleled success and, and is now you know, a true mission critical part of most businesses across the world. I never know how people are using Excel because it's used in so many different ways. I think it's sort of a friendlier way to, to look at, do some number crunching, if you will. Excel actually changed the way business works really by making it easy for people to use and to be able to make decisions and do calculations and put charts on their data. We have financial companies that use it to crunch vast amounts of data to run simulations so they can help determine what's going to happen in the world. They don't just use Excel as a the tool for writing forms. They actually build solutions on top of Excel, things that have been running for 10, 15 years. We work with companies to make sure those things keep running with every new version of Excel. And these are critical, critical applications for their business that they need to keep their business running to stay ahead of their competitor. I mean, not a day goes by where people don't have to make some sort of a decision and categorize their information in some meaningful way. And Excel just does it in a, in a way that's accessible to, to most people. You can't imagine where, where people have been empowered to start their own business because they have that at their fingertips. Excel has expanded to onto the web with the Excel web application. And 2010 was a big release where we brought a lot of functionality onto the web where now you can just do a lot of Excel in the browser. You don't need the client app. You can do editing, you can do collaboration, you can do a lot of what we call one version of the truth. With a server product, you publish it onto the server. That's where it lives. There's only one place where that document lives as opposed to as an attachment in 500 emails. I worked a lot on our calc code, our recalc engine and our, our dependencies. Worked a lot on our conditional formatting code, which has been a feature that's been around for a while, but we, we really um, added a lot to a lot of different, different styles and really expanded that feature. Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to improve our performance, and I think we made great strides there. Went to a bigger grid and our 64-bit Excel, and these are things we hadn't done in terms of expanding the grid to that dimension. So where people say, oh, Excel's an old code base, you can't do these big changes. And you know, we say, you know what, we do them. And we do them all the time, and we're going to keep doing them. It's software. We can do whatever we want. If we go back to the beginning of Excel 25 years ago to now, there's been incredible transformation in terms of how people communicate. There's a lot more collaboration going on in the world. Corporations and organizations have a lot of information or data that's in back-end systems, and we need to be able to empower people to look at that data, twist it around, analyze it, pivot it, and examine it in different ways so that they can uncover some insights. So Excel plays a tremendous role in the whole business intelligence world by virtue of the fact that it's the tool that people use. It's the one that they actually touch. We think that we should be delivering a datagasmic experience to people. So if we think about Excel in, in the world where people have cell phones and they have all different kinds of mobile devices and they work in browsers and they have their PCs, you know, there's a version of Excel that pretty much runs on any device. If we look at what's out there today, we have the web application, which allows people to use Excel on any machine that doesn't have to have any software installed on it. And in that way, you can bring together a wide variety of groups who can work on a single spreadsheet at the same time, but the people that are working on it could be all over the world using whatever form factor is convenient for them. People are going to want to be able to get at their data no matter where they are. They want to be able to get it anything, anytime. And so we look at the cloud as, as a repository for these numbers and then teams can work no matter where they are around the world aiming at this one particular document that sits in the cloud. It's what makes it really accessible to people. So it doesn't matter whether you're sitting on the airplane with your Wi-Fi connection on your laptop or at a coffee shop with an internet connection or if you're on your phone. You know, all these people, no matter where they are and in what form factors they're using, they can access that same piece of data in the cloud. There's ways of presenting the data to people in ways that they haven't even been able to imagine yet. 
Excel is one of the most successful products in the history of, of software. Excel is, I think it's really boundless because we've always been able to morph it into being able to have different capabilities that maybe weren't traditionally thought of as part of a spreadsheet. You know, there are these transitions in the industry and you have to be able to ride those transitions in order to stay on top. The thing that keeps me excited about Excel is it's still constantly changing. There's never a release where I feel like, oh, we're done, let's quit. I think next to a person on the plane and started talking and they literally grabbed me by the shirt. You work on Excel? I love Excel. People love Excel. Ha, ha, ha.